Hey everybody, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a web optimized image that is smaller in file size, which will help your websites load faster. Now for this video, I'm going to use Photoshop because that's the program I've used all my life, but you can use something like GIMP or CorelDRAW, and there's a bunch of online image editors you can use as well. And the steps I take are going to be a little bit different because I'm in Photoshop, it's a different piece of software. But if you're using something else, you may have to Google the instructions on exactly how to accomplish saving for web inside that platform, or it might actually be quite obvious and the work process may be similar to what I do. So what I have is an image, which is the first thing we need because we want to we want to save an image for a smaller file size. So we need an image, and I have an image of a snowman that we built last year. And the size of this image is 1.6 megabytes is the file size. And the dimensions are 1536 by 20 or by 2048. Now the funny thing is with web saving and with taking pictures on a camera is that the quality of the camera picture is far higher than you normally want on a website. And so we can actually reduce this file size while still keeping the same dimensions. So I'm going to show you how that works and I'm also going to show you how I save smaller pictures for much smaller file sizes to be used on the web. So I have this image open in Photoshop already. And if I go to the image menu and click on image size, what I'm looking for is the resolution, which is 300 pixels per inch, which is print quality. But I'm, I want to convert it to web quality, which is much lower. And the standard web quality image resolution is 72. And you may have to put these numbers, the width and the height back up because they change automatically with the lower resolution but we had 1536 by 2048 and our resolution is now 72. If we press OK and then go to File and choose Save for Web and PNG files are always larger in file size, not always, that, that's incorrect. PNG files are generally larger in file size than JPEG files so if I want to save a smaller file I choose JPEG and then within the JPEG choice, you have quality choices. For the internet, all you really need is medium, medium or low. You can get away with low with some images. If the image is very busy and smaller, you can actually choose the low quality and not really notice a difference because the image is so small. But I generally choose medium. Sometimes I choose high. But if we choose the medium file size for the image, or sorry, the medium JPEG quality for the image, and click on Save at the bottom and save that to that folder we were just in. If I can find it again. There it is. I'm going to save it as original smaller. Now if we go back to that folder, we look at the two different file sizes. For the, the original image, it was 1.6 megabytes and the dimensions were 1536 by 2048. And we go to the smaller image we have the same dimensions, 1536 by 2048, but the file size is only 143 kilobytes, which is much, much, much smaller. It's over 10 times smaller in file size than the original, which means that will load a whole lot faster on the internet. But the image is still quite large. If we zoom in to 100% right now, it says up here we're at 25% image size. If we zoom up to 100% image size, this is much bigger than you're going to want on most web pages. So what I also do is I change, go, I go back to the image size again. I usually do this all in one step. The reason I'm doing it in two steps for this video is just to show you all the different stuff and all the different variables that go on when you're editing images or shrinking images. For most images I put on the internet, I try to keep it between 400 to 500 pixels wide which is this large. This is the 100% size and that's still nice and large for, for a website. So that, that works 9 times out of 10. So if we go back to file and we save for web, for web, it remembers the options we just set the last time. So we had JPEG and medium size. We click on save and then we go to images smaller. I usually add a 400 to denote the width of the image. If we go back to our finder or back to our folder, 
So the, the original smaller image that we did was 143 kilobytes. Now the one we just saved that's only 400 pixels wide, that one is 16 kilobytes. So that's almost another 10, time, 10 times reduction from the smaller image. Now if we compare this one to the original, the original is 1.6 megabytes, and this is only 16 kilobytes, that's a hundred times reduction because one megabyte is 1,000 kilobytes. So that's a hundred times reduction in file size. Now that doesn't mean the image will necessarily load a hundred times faster on a website, but it will load a whole lot faster than an image that's 1.6 megabytes, especially if you have multiple images on a page. And there are some sites I find, it blows my mind, they create little icons, like little Facebook icons, and each of those little icon images is a megabyte in size, which is incredible. There's no reason it has to be that big. A little icon like that, that's only one or two colors, if they're, I mean, flat graphics are the trend right now, so it's very few colors in these icons, you should be able to have a file size of two or three kilobytes for those. But there are websites who have over a megabyte for those, and that's killing their page load speed. And I don't want that to happen for you. I want you to know how to web optimize your images so you have faster loading pages. And that's all there is to it. So to quickly recap, what I did was, or what I do, my process, is I take the original image, I put it into an image editing program, I change the resolution from 300, sometimes it's 180 or 200, I change it down to 72, which is the resolution for web, and then I change the width of the image to be the exact width that I want it to be on the website. And usually for me, that's between 400 and 500 pixels wide. Then I save the image as the, in, or via the save for web option. And then I have much smaller images as a result and much faster load times. I hope this video helps you. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Please make sure you like this video if it helped. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our social media feeds, and check out wplearninglab.com, where we write about WordPress every single day. Talk to you soon.